Our traditional greeting, you know, thank you. I wish you a very deep sense of inner peace. Um, my name in Seneca is given to me by an elder uh, faith keeper of the Cold Spring Longhouse, is Yatsent, which means she climbs. And uh, long story about how we got our names, but I'm also uh, referred to simply as Lori Quigley. Uh, I am Seneca, um, member of the Wolf Clan. I grew up on the Allegheny Territory down by the Longhouse uh, on the Steenberg end, as people refer to different parts of our, our territory. Currently, I'm the Vice President for Academic Affairs at Madai College, and um, my, I have a PhD in language learning and literacy, so my background is really how do we learn languages, and uh, if I do find any spare time, uh, I still try to keep involved as much as I can in helping uh, indigenous language teachers teach indigenous language uh, primarily as a second language, which is kind of sad. So um, Indian education, <laughs> I have spent my entire career for the most part uh, in some aspect of Indian education. So why do I do this? I don't know. Um, <clears throat> I grew up on, the, on, on this reservation territory. I saw us treated uh, as second class citizens in our schools. I didn't like it. Um, I think I was fortunate enough to have been one of the students who uh, on her own with the help of my parents got to college because certainly the guidance counselors in schools here when I was a teenager never went to the native students and said would you like to go to college would you like to take the SAT we were just sort of looked over and that oh we're never gonna you know that that's not for us when I was a teenager I also used to work for the Seneca Nation I used to be as a teenager a GED instructor for students um, you know who were adults at that time in their years weren't successful in our schools. And so I could see that generationally, that lack of success with our students in schools, that lack of paying attention to the assets that our students bring into schools, their cultural background, their heritage, and accepting that and welcoming that. I was honored to have been nominated by my tribe, my tribal uh, officials uh, from the president's office uh, to uh, be considered for the a presidential appointment to serve on the National Advisory Council on Indian Education. So I was nominated, vetted through the process, accepted onto the council, and I served two terms uh, from Bush's term into the Obama administration. What that afforded me was um, the ability to really travel across Indian country in the United States to really see what was happening in quote unquote Indian education from you know really birth through elder programs and that's really how we look at education we don't just dissect it into K-12 or higher ed because for us literally education begins with birthing okay and it continues all the way to elder and so on our home territories you will see that our education programs are actually designed just for that from birth all the way through elder and sometimes you'll see it's a whole community effort where an event is you know everybody involved okay everybody has their role their purpose and so that's kind of how in our viewpoint how we see education uh, as compared to what a westernized education concept or model might be part of our giving back and our passion for doing what we do is to make sure that the generations behind us, okay, at least seven generations back, all right, are empowered, okay, to carry on a lot of the things that we're working on. So I think for years we've always referred to it as Indian education and I think um, for a number of years Indian education meant either those federally funded programs, whether it's programs funded by the Bureau of Indian Affairs or the Department of Education's Office of Indian Education uh, and we've accepted it for many years as the correct nomenclature but uh, for, I think more and more since the turn of the century we're really using the words indigenous education and it's quite different from Indian education. To me Indian education was those programs to help us get through the westernized education system in the United States. That's Indian education. Okay, Indigenous education is so different because it really follows that indigenous thought, our way of thinking, which is not linear, okay? It's the way we tell our stories. We go out here 
and we come back, and then we weave the story this way, and then we come back. And that's indigenous thought, okay? The way we, the way we think, the way we see things, our worldview. So I think that indigenous education today is encompassing that worldview, and it's quite different. I mean, recently, in the past five years, I've worked with students who are working on their master's thesis or their doctoral dissertations who are indigenous, and they're struggling in that westernized world because westernized systems of higher education are, are having a difficult time accepting that there's indigenous pedagogy, that there's a different way of doing the traditional five-chapter dissertation, okay, that there is another way of coming about, you know, finding new things and researching. And so I think that uh, today, in the 21st century, indigenous education means really taking a look at who we are, our culture, our language, our traditions, and really weaving that into what we're doing in education in, in all forms. I think probably the most important thing for individuals who are not part of this country to understand is that I think there were many mechanisms in, that happened historically in this country to get rid of that in, indigeneity, to get rid of that through assimilation. The boarding schools is a perfect example, Native American boarding schools. My mother is a survivor of a Native American boarding school where they purposefully tried to take away the language, the culture, the heritage, in fact, break the family, okay, is, is one of the probably the most important impacts of, of that era. What I think people need to realize that we, for all these centuries, have been able to hold on to our language, hold on to our customs, hold on to our traditions as our way of life. Not our religion, okay? It's our way of life. And in carrying that forward and how I think that, you know, we've finally learned to navigate both worlds so much better than we had in the past that we're able to actually finally, I think, come out on top, if you can believe that and um, that we're not a people of the past, although we bring our past with us, okay? It's amazing how we bring our past with us, and yet we look forward to the next seven generations. Everything that we say, everything we think, everything that we do, we do it with, a, with thinking about those seven generations ahead of us, the impact on that. And I, I think we've carried that on, bringing all that and bringing it forward. And I think that if we can just hold on to that and never lose sight of that. Uh, we, that I think that's why we survived today. Well, yeah, hey, yeah, yeah.